This is Bucket, not, we'll do it live. This is not one of those my favorite movie things. This is oh, just yeah. whatever cinephile the fuck movie. we call it. Um, this is quite the opposite of my favorite movie <laughs> in Ryan's case. But we're here with Ryan and Larissa to talk about Malcolm and Marie. Malcolm. Netflix's Samuel Levinson's, right? Is that who made it? Sam Levinson. Yep. Visionary filmmaker, Samuel <laughs> Levinson. <laughs> and so it begins. Um, there, so two different some. camps here. Ryan despised the flick. I remember seeing you made a fucking letterboxed or Facebook review or something. And right. then a few days later, what was it, like a star and a half or something? A few days later, you're like, I thought about it some more. It's a star or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it decreased It's in, in terms of its, uh, I don't know, like, it's quality level like yeah but like, you were thinking about it for days so that's something to be said i was you know what made me think about it for days though honestly it wasn't the movie um it was the it was the response to the movie that made yeah, me think that, about it because you never you ever watch a movie and then you're like okay you know you absorb it and then like you the discourse continues and you're like why the fuck are people still talking about this you know what i mean and then it makes you it forces you to like reflect on it again after that is an interesting aspect of a, new, I mean? a movie that's new and fresh mm -hmm. and everybody water cooler talking it and shit now larissa mm -hmm. you actually like the film right yeah i liked it because uh i felt like it was like an argument between two sides of myself and i'm like very narcissistic and solipsistic so i enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> all right so you're enjoying whatever we got to couch all this shit in the right terms is very subjective as all are but i'm just saying you're like very much enjoying it because of what personally it's almost like what stake you had in the film you know what i mean yeah like, like i, I related to you. it i didn't make it about me when i was watching it so feel? much yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. I, I like i like his other stuff though too i like um well i watched eight eight out of the ten episodes of euphoria and i and i like really liked Ass assassination nation i think he has a lot to say on on creativity and making art and stuff and uh i'm here for that i'm here for those conversations sure. and uh because he's actually trying to make something that means something personal and i feel like a lot of filmmakers and writers are just trying to write something so they can sell it so yeah i valued that preach appreciate it as well um i don't know if you want to get chris into what you thought of the film what i thought of the film yeah, I uh, I hadn't seen it before. I watched it yesterday. I actually adored it, man. I loved it. <laughs> um, it seemed like a, it would be, make a great play. You know, just it was very just all dialogue driven, you know, one location, et cetera. And it just had the feel of, you know, that that level of, uh, of quality of dialogue and everything that would suit a play. Um, I thought the acting was great. Zendaya, especially she she was a kind of a powerhouse. I was kind of blown away by how awesome she was in it um look at ryan <laughs> i don't have any pre i didn't i don't i haven't seen any of sam's other stuff um so i i really hadn't heard any of the conversation you guys are talking about i'm that untapped in with like social media and stuff that so i didn't have any kind of preconceived uh, notions other than our brief touching on it with ryan and before but i actually yeah i really dug it i thought it was I mean, I dug it too, man. Yeah. Apologies. <laughs> and well, uh, and it's be content. Like three against it's one good. with Ryan, but I know he I'm has. All, um, uh, right. Right. Ryan's three people in one anyway, so exactly. it's all right. He's ready to go. <laughs> okay, so y'all ready for my take or not? Yeah, bring it. How First, do we want to do this? Do okay. we wanna, is this going to become a debate or is it just you weigh in? Because I don't want to seem like everyone's teaming up on you and shit. I know you won't take anything personally. We're talking about the film. you know. Right, yeah, like Ryan you said, it's all subjective. Yeah. <laughs> no. Look, I have discuss we whether have discussions you, whether all the you, time with people who like, dislike films. That whether you like something or you love something or you hate it, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever the case may be, it's not an, it's not an attack on you. So well, I'm not, right. I don't, yeah, I don't so hurt. You just I don't, posted about. Right, right. I don't personalize um, someone liking a piece of art that I had nothing to do with, like right. as if it's an attack on me and vice versa. Like if I was to love something Good. and someone hated it, 
Yeah, so I know like that about music, you. I'm just like, putting it out there for everybody. Right, but some so people that, can't stand country music or hip hop or right. whatever it may be. And it's like, do you really hold that against people? You know, it should be the right. same with this, I think. Yeah. So with that out the way, um, when it comes to Sam Levinson as a filmmaker, um, Assassination Nation was, um, I enjoyed it more than a lot of its detractors, honestly. Um, I'll say that. This I film, seen that shit either. This film, nah, I, just no. Um, I don't even know where to begin. In terms of like the performances, um, Denzel Washington's son, uh, he's wooden. I mean, he might as well be Pinocchio. He's the most wooden performer. He's, he's wooden in every film. I'm sorry, he's, he is. Like, I mean, there's moments in in, in uh, Malcolm and Marie where he's delivering the dialogue and I'm like, all right, cool. But for the most part, it's a very, I mean, the guy's made of wood, like he is. Um, that's another thing. Um, Zendaya, um, she's okay. I mean, like, she's not anything, again, like, very, I wasn't blown away by her performance. I mean, I think some of the stuff she's known to do, kind of like the the sarcasticness and the, like, mm, matter of fact, the shit that she did in, like, the Spider-Man movie, you know, she's good at doing that. But again, like, I don't, I find, what I found about the film was, I found, I found that ultimately it was um, all surface level. Like, none of this shit, to me, rang as if, I'm listening to people who are actually going through anything. So like, for example, the story is about, okay, a filmmaker. Okay. Wow. And he's in a nice big house that the studio put him up in. Okay. Wow. Cool. Great. You know, and again, it doesn't have to be relatable, but it's not. Okay. And then um, you listen to these two people just argue the whole fucking time. First, her issue is, oh, he didn't thank me at the movie premiere. Boo fucking who. Right. Right. Then his issue. Again, again, well, I mean, that's the first yeah. level of it. It's revealed. Right. There's subtext right. to right. that right. later. Right. But kind of even, an onion being yeah. peeled. Yeah. But again, you call it an onion. I, I doesn't have any layers. It's all, it's all surface level nonsense. Okay. So what, so what Sam Levinson is doing here, right. Is he's appropriating the aesthetics of art house cinema, right. In order to elevate subpar material. <laughs> like this to me is not good. Like the di- like the macaroni and cheese scene, for example, horrible shit dialogue and why the hell is he looking like that while he's eating the mac and cheese either which is another i don't know why he was whole, stabbing you know? the mac and cheese like, yeah, 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 that 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 <laughs> right right the be- the best the, <laughs> like for it. me for me the moment it was the interesting whole, but I was like, this movie fuck? this no this movie should have been a short film one two the best moment in this movie happens about 39 minutes something like that 37 minutes in the movie and it's the it's the toxic bathroom fight OK, we're in the bathroom. She's in the tub and they're fighting. Mm-hmm. To me, that's the only interesting moment. And everything else is filler. It's filler from the beginning to get to that point, And it's filler after. I, I, again, like that's I've the seen scene where he's telling him about all the chicks he fucked and everything. Right, right. I've seen this scene and I've seen this movie done better. Like I've seen it before. Like I've seen the shit done better. So this doesn't impress me. I, Jason, as you know, I'm watching subversive like just weird shit all the time right i've seen numerous kind of like single location two character set shot in black and white i've seen this movie before i've seen it done better like and i'm just not going to sit here and pretend like like like, what do you mean like what what roman polanski's repulsion is one woman in a black and white in a fucking apartment that's better than this movie I mean, it's a different um, kind of thing, but, right? Yeah. But I'm just, I I'm just I don't really like repulsion. I mean, but repulsion is <laughs> like a repulsion is a far better film made by a far better filmmaker. That being said, okay, let's also get, let's also get into okay, you can get into the the the, the meta narrative of of Malcolm and Marie. Like you can go into that. You can we can go down that route, which is obviously the meta narrative. Let's do this in waves. Let's, okay. let's jump do back the meta narrative. We'll get let's to that ride the wave, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> jump back. I want to hear something real quick though. Okay. You go into a movie not hating it off the bat, right? So no, I go. What point? What, how deep did you get it? At what point were you like, you know what? Fuck this movie. Immediately. It was pretty. It was pretty early. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. So then I think yeah. your whole take on her performance and everything after that is colored by fuck this movie already to a degree mm. that maybe since would, none of us at any point really said fuck this movie enough. that maybe we were buying into it more at that point. You know what I mean? Right. I just looking at just. I just think like. Uh, I don't know if it was necessarily that because again, I was drawn back in when moments what I felt were good. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Like I was drawn back in obviously with the bathroom shit, right? Then it immediately took me back out again. And then like I was drawn back in in brief instances when he was doing the, uh, when he was shitting on 
the fucking reporter who was giving him a positive review. Sure was like amazing. there was, there was, there was, yeah. they fu- he fucked it up because he went too long and one, he's too wooden. Yeah. One, he's wooden. There were fuck. points where it wore itself out. I agree. Right. That, it, it like, went where the conversations, way, it, I started right, to even tune right. out it's just like, a bit because like it was like repeating itself. Right. And stuff. It's but I appreciate that too, that that's like a real argument, you know? So yeah, I, I didn't fault it for that. I'm just saying that is the effect it had on me too. Mm. At but but so. my issues, I mean, my issues are myriad when it comes to this mm. movie. But, but <laughs> like one of my issues, obviously, again, is this idea of uh, like the character being a mouthpiece for Sam Levinson himself, right? Yeah, I really want to dig into this. So it's yeah, like- I think that was what you had raised before. And, right, yeah, so it's like, so I have like to listen, I have to listen to the narcissism of a white, spoiled Hollywood brat, right? Because his father is Barry Levinson, right? Yeah. I have to listen to the Great narcissism director. of him depicted through black characters in order to capitalize on the uh, representation uh, matters, wokes, woke sect of Hollywood right now, right? So he's saying, well, I can criticize all of this shit. I can criticize, I can actually criticize uh, uh, the way they apply um, the kind of woke kind of template to film criticism now. I can criticize that, right? But what I'll do is I'll do it through fucking uh, the Malcolm character, right? And therefore I have a shield because I'm a white Jewish man, right? I would have respected Sam. No, I would have respected Sam even more if he would have just made it like a a, a dude named Sam and he was just a white Jewish guy. Because clearly this is, and he's even gone on record to say this, this is his opinions. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you're not like, it's one thing if you're trying to tell a story and you're like, I'm telling a story about this guy specifically. No, this guy is you. You just changed a few elements. Again, so like, to me, that's like, you have no balls. So it's like, that's one where I'm like, this motherfucker has no balls. I mean, isn't it semi-autobiographical? If it was truly autobiographical. Ooh, yeah, it was from an argument that he had. Yeah, uh, but was his, his wife an uh, ex-model who cut herself with nail clippers and all that? You know what I'm saying? Did he well, have an argument with his wife about casting her in the film or not? If that's I, not I, really what was going on. I like I don't I I partially agree with what you're saying, right? It's like, well, he okay, so he works closely with Zendaya, Zendaya on Euphoria, and he he talked about how he kept creating her character from the discussions with her like to sort of match her personality she had like a huge stake in it um yeah so does john david washington i think they had like they were producers on it they had a lot of say in how it was written but i also outside of that like i don't it's like i understand what you're saying ryan but i also think in that in itself is commenting on what's going on because it's like about it's a movie where it's like about these two characters, it's like one of them's fighting for her own authenticity. Like she feels like he stole her story. And so that's just like an interesting dynamic that then he's forcing his story into his actors. It's like an Ouroboros of the creative cycle of who owns what, no one owns anything. And what stories are yours to tell? And what stories do you just, are you just kind of like a, like a synthesizer of like <laughs> I don't know if I'm kind of going a little no. bit wacky with this, but no, I feel sense. like I'm following you. That in itself is a is like commenting on what's happening in culture right now, where it's like you're not allowed to tell this story, or you have, if you are going to tell this story, you have to have like sensitivity readers. You have to consult with all these outside forces when it's like you're a fucking artist. You can make whatever right. you That's fucking want. That's almost the point of artists, right? The this comes up in almost every podcast what, without we being do. restricted. Oh, do you? Yeah. A lot of yeah, times sorry. off the mic with people. No, no, no it's, it's good. Dude, this is like the point of That's this podcast why. almost though, is to yeah. talk about like what are the rules we have to follow? What responsibilities do we have as storytellers? Well, fucking none. <laughs> That's what he says. He's outside. Be reckless. Like be bold. Who gives a it's, fuck? It's, I, I think it's reductive to be like, oh, he was using like these black actors to say his white opinion. It's like, why? Because it is reductive because it's it, because the movie the deserves reductive. It, it deserves that because the movie in and of itself. And again, it's my opinion. The movie is shit. So it's like, yeah, it's Ooh. reductive. It's reductive because again, <laughs> I I think that this is bad art. I think this is art that is made for people who like uh 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 uh. uh don't necessarily look beyond a surface level kind of like, oh, like it looks like a movie that has a level of like prestige to it. It's faux art. It's, it's faux art. It's fake. It's, fart. Let's it's coin fucking that term fake. Now. It's like, yeah, even, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like, okay. <laughs> here's here's why it's fake. After the fart. <laughs> here's why it's fake. So, so again, we have this character who's, who's 
<laughs> oh, we've clearly I've, I've, I've have identified right as, that as a mouthpiece for Sam Levinson, right? And I just have to sit here and listen to not only this character, who is also the son of De Denzel Washington, right? Say the words of the son of Barry Levinson and talk about oh, in this business you have to work, you have to work so hard. I had to work harder than you have to work harder than everybody. I'm like that is okay. offensive if what you're saying is right. I just don't. Necessarily buy into that narrative. Uh, it's, it's interesting that the, the film itself is about it's stolen right. authenticity. And it's stolen true. authenticity right. is it, what you're it's, right. But it's so, interesting. Yes. It's interesting that you bring that up, right? And your whole entire cast is nepotism cases. So you got a Disney Channel, a Disney Channel child star, who's right again. All, all these, all these <laughs> things are all these, all three, the major elements, the two principal actors, and the mm -hmm. fucking writer director are all raised in Hollywood as mm -hmm. fucking babies. Right. Okay. Now, so again, as the proletariat, we could take offense to that, but also, should we hold that against them? They fucking right. yes, you yeah. like okay. So like possessor, <laughs> like we, me, me and Larissa have talked about possessor before. I love possessor. Okay, possessor is the made by the son of David Cronenberg. I'm like that's one right. of my yeah, favorite we movies. It. I was gonna right, that that's one of my favorite movies from last year. He like, you, again, if it's good, it's good. If it's good, it's good. I'm not gonna I like bullshit. this better than possessor. Me too. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You're you're canceled, bro. You cannot say that this fucking movie is better than possessor. I just smoke. We're uncancelable. I guarantee. I will take the motherfucking. Uh, you. I'll agree with everything you have to say on about about possessor, though. That's the. Whoa, 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 whoa. You will. Thing. We will yeah, return. It was a good film, still. You yeah, will return. Great. Wait a minute. Just you like will return part. to these two films. In, in, a, in a year to maybe five years and that set what you guys just said right now you will be like what was i thinking no but here's what okay. i'll do that's i will exactly think back and i will remember like, how i, I felt while watching it mm. you, you'll difference. be like you'll be like what was i thinking because possessor people are still going to be talking about it this movie we're not going to be talking, talking about this talk movie. about it. i care about how i felt you know, no no, no but here's the thing no, back, you know? but it's not about necessarily that though jason what i'm saying is people will be talking about it because it's that's what tr good better art is better art is a continual conversation. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yeah, I mean, through time, right? You reassess it, right? Malcolm and Marie is not going to be worthy of reassessment. Like, you're going to be record, like, oh, you're going to be like, oh, this is five bullshit. years from now, we're going to redo this mm -hmm. and revisit will, the film. And it will, years. and you yeah, will so not be thinking this way that. about this movie. This movie, will you be thinking about this movie the way I might people say the look? Same to you. Remember, no, remember uh, uh, Paul Haggis with Crash and how, how that won the Oscar? And then, like, everyone watches Crash now and, like, yo, this movie is a piece of shit. Uh, right? I was saying it at the time. When I saw it in the right. theater. Yeah, Chris <laughs> yes. and I were like, what the Mark, fuck? Mark but... my words. You will look back at Malcolm and Marie and you will look back at Possessor and as that fucking alarm goes off and you will not, you will not have the same opinion. You'll be like, yo, Possessor's fucking great. It's gotten better with time and Malcolm and Marie. Very well could it's happen. Not the case. I'm not going to yeah, say it won't. Then but... another five years or 10 years from, <laughs> the movie would have a different meaning because, I mean, if you watch movies that were made, ah, uh, fuck, I, I was going to write it down. I was going to watch it. It was a movie that was made in the 90s that was literally about everything that's going on in culture. Fuck, was it called The Last Supper? Um, something like The Last Supper. I don't know if you, I was going to watch it. I was like, I've never even heard of this. Uh, fuck. Is this like um, a foreign movie or no 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 it's not shit? at all there's like tons Since, of oh yeah. here it is Since the last supper 1995 american black comedy yeah it's like cameron diaz anna beth gish um yeah. but it looked but it's seeing like it in video stores group, and all a, yeah. a group of idealistic but frustrated liberals yeah, succumb right. to the temptation of murdering right-wing pundits for their political beliefs oh, it's like okay just hmm. take that and then you take something like um uh the Lenny uh, Bruce movie, Lenny, Bruce I think Lenny. Lenny. You Lenny, know what I mean? It's like all of these things that come in cycles. So it might not. You might be like, this movie has no fucking relevance in it, three years because maybe we've moved on as a culture. God willing, we'll have moved on as a culture. But in twenty years or ten years or fifteen years, the cycle will come back and it will be relevant again. And that's the nature of making like a film that is touching on current issues or current fixations you know but, I mean? so you'll be thinking maybe jason will think this right you may be thinking that this film will age like a film like dinner with andre no, i'm here to two different things this is about emotions no, oh, 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 about not, ideas, hold up so though hold up though age differently i think hold too, up but. though hold up though it is a different thing but again so it's maybe, two yeah. it's two characters right the whole fucking movie having a conversation mm -hmm. and hashing out shit right right so on that level movies, right i love those shit. movies too I love those movies too, which is why when I like Malcolm and Marie is Taylor for me because I like that. 
The dialogue stinks. It stinks. It's like <laughs> it's like a bad play. Like it's not good. It goes on too long. Like someone needed to get in there and say, "Hey, bro, stop." Yeah, that's like yeah, yeah. you. You but... don't write lyrical dialogue. Like it's not like there's moments where it's I like. I love it's like, that. That's the very similitude of it, right? It's like feels no, like you're flying. It, no, 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 no. None of the best dialogue. Redundant. The best. No, whether it's Patty Shayevsky, whether it's Martin McDonough, whether it's Tarantino, whether it's what's a newer, a newer, uh, a newer you're a stylist analog. though. Well, hold up, hold up. Mm-hmm. A newer analog, uh, Craig Zeller. Yeah, you're right. They're stylists, right? Yeah. But they what? Don't feel what? Real. But what part of? But see, this this doesn't feel real either. There's nothing about this conversation. These conversations that feel real. It feels like a play. It's agree. one of the first not things that. Me. Hold up. When Chris, Chris, one of the first things you said was it feels like a play the one of the biggest things about oh, a play, play is, is, is theatrical like this be you don't sit here and try and tell me that this theatrical ass dialogue sounds natural because it does not there's nothing about this dialogue that sounds natural it sounded natural again to me. i will take the pepsi challenge with you guys again in a year yeah, or five right, years we'll do that this shit is not natural it's fucking not the, no, the, the dialogue. Not the, the dialogue. No, 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 no. The dialogue. It's not natural that, to up. you doesn't mean yeah. it's not natural to other people. Well, again, I yeah, go on gigantic rants <laughs> like Malcolm and yeah, I've, I've gone been on in those similar arguments rants. to this. <laughs> yes. what, 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 uh, you, well, we agree to disagree, uh, but here's my. Maybe thing, it's though. some white people shit. And he's like, it might be. Don't argue it might, like and, and, and black people definitely don't argue like that. One, um, <laughs> okay. two, two. Okay. One of the things. One of the things I will say is is again like. This fucking movie, in terms of like its its dialogue, is like it feels performed. So how can you make the argument right that it something that feels performed feels seems real? Like I just don't. I never at one point ever thought like I was in a real situation. Like I was like, do you have to feel that to enjoy a movie, but it, Ryan? Because you don't have to. But the argument don't that was, have that, and uh, there's yeah, something kind of very charming yeah, yeah. and engaging about feeling like you're wrapped that... up in a melodramatic some of my favorite movies are like sunset boulevard it's like melodram- melodramatic like not real feeling and that's also part of but i wasn't the in. one who injected the whole idea right. of it feeling real into the conversation that came from y'all I'm, well i'm just arguing <laughs> with the point that you're making now because it felt real to me because i've had kind of like variations of these arguments uh over the years so we're just some melodramatic <laughs> motherfuckers i guess like, <laughs> right 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 right, right. Like, i've had these super arguments <laughs> but well, here's the thing I'm over that shit now but i've had the, it in the, the past characters though things. his yeah, character no, I mean, up until like yesterday <laughs> <laughs> is his woodenness now i haven't seen tenant and i haven't seen some other shit i haven't even seen black clansman yet unfortunately because i'm just i'm b- way behind on movies and shit partly yeah. why we do these podcasts but his performance i don't know if he's been wooden or not because i can't speak to that so i'm kind of looking at it a priori as i like to look at shit anyway mm-hmm. and I look at the character, and the character's great sin is that he's an unemotional, yeah, kind of emotionally a on vacuous some level fuck, and, yeah. really. And he's kind of just mean. Love to hear himself talk. Treats people as objects. Jackie Treehorn mm. treats objects like women. He's no, he's the opposite of yeah. Jackie Treehorn. So I'm kind of like, it's great. He is performative because he's trying to act like he has emotions about this, but it's mm. really just rage and frustration, let me, let me which say, is let me... ego. He's really just an ego monster. So which is most guys, <laughs> right? <laughs> Let me say this. Let me say this. I don't cry when I argue. Humans, I'm, honestly. I'm a dick. When I say he's wooden, right? That's not necessarily a critique of him himself. Honestly, truthfully, I, I that's that's more in that's more a critique of Sam as a director because knowing that like his limitations, right? Mm-hmm. Knowing knowing fucking uh you know uh uh, uh I, what's his name again? John David Washington, right? That's I always want to, I, I want to respect him because he's a grown man and I don't yeah. want to call him Denzel's Denzel son, son is kind of right? Because that's what I'm, shit. you know what I'm saying? It's condescending, right? So I'm not even like, I'm going to shoot him bail and be like, no, 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 because that's on the director to pull back or to, or to notice like, okay, like he's not delivering the line kind of What like, would you do if you saw some behind the scenes and there's a scene where he was just way too emotional and Sam Levinson told him to dial it back because the character isn't emotional. Then that the, so so if so thing. so if he's doing that, right? And, it, and that's the the end result is that then it's he's miscast. He wasn't he wasn't prepared yet as an actor to take I mean the, the part of the making of the movie is the fact great. they did it in a pandemic. Just the three of them kind of got together so they weren't going to cast it audition it. It's like let's the three of us make a movie together and this is what they made yeah I mean, that's a big part of it so. yeah i mean that's part of again that's part of the story that's part of the marketing i get it it's part of the marketing of the way they did it do you They're feel like the black actors who are in this movie are like c- 
cucks or whatever the fuck you would even call it. I don't know. For I wouldn't call. Uh, first of all, being offended that they were used as mouthpieces for this white dude to spout his shit. See, see, see that see, they see, themselves didn't feel yes. authentic. Well, see, here's the thing, though. First of all, I feel like they're all kind of of the same. You know what I'm saying? Like they're all yeah, of the same royal, class, yeah. same yeah. kind of like background. Again, they've all been. They've all. They're all children of the industry, right? So therefore, they relate. So and also like whatever choices they make as individuals, like in terms of like, I'm going to take this role, that's on them. They made that decision. They made that choice, right? So if they're okay with it, fine. Well, and part you of it, again, I mean? was just like, what can we do during the lockdown? And again, I've, 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 roles over I've, seen, I've seen several lockdown movies. You know what I'm saying? I was, in, I was literally on set in Canada while they mm -hmm. shot an action movie during the pandemic. So like this idea that like, oh, this through the pandemic, we should go. They made whole action movies with motherfuckers I've seen whole action movies being made right now, so I'm not impressed. Like, you know, it's what arguably I mean? harder to make a two-hander than it is to make an action movie, though. In terms of writing and stuff, it's like you have to do much more emotional writing labor to yeah. really write like a, a good two-hander than I you think, do to write like a movie that has like 15 characters. And in running it. and I, jumping and shit. I think I think it depends on the writer. So I think for some writers, it's harder. And then it's reversed for some writers. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, just depends on the skill set of the writer. Yeah, I mean. You know, for some writers, some writers, two handers, like, yo, that's what I do. And they just get in there and they can, they can have people bounce back and forth and do a whole damn movie it's like not that. Sam Levinson. And then there's, right. And there's other writers who are like, I can't do that at all, but I can do action like a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, and I can, da -da -da -da, I can create sequences and all of that. Right. So it's, it just depends on the individual kind of artist. You know what I mean? When they sit down to, to craft it, it's like when they write it, you know, like, so yes, there is a difficulty in both things, you know what I'm saying? But it just depends on like the individual artist's like ability or aptitude, you know what I mean? So while yes, two handers can be difficult, I would say in this case, maybe you shouldn't wrote a two hander. Or if well, you're going to write right. the constraints of a two hander in a single setting in one evening like this is challenging because you have to find a way to keep it engaging you know without the use of other characters and other scenery and all that stuff well i mean i, I um, saw, so I saw this though that just, just to finish though i did Sorry. think this accomplished that in the sense of its turns you know where you would the argument itself who you're rooting like, for the, who you empathize with yeah it kept flipping in terms of who you might have sympathized with more who is making the better argument even the nature of the argument itself they patch it up it seems like it's almost over they're gonna have makeup sex whatever then you know it turns again when he just goes to take a piss it comes back and she's th thought about it again and, <laughs> you know like that stuff i thought was pretty you know engaging and and well accomplished that's and good. then that's even so a much couple harder to pull off like she said i do yeah. think as a storyteller it's harder to pull that off than to just say, oh, the, the bad guys got away and now we got to chase him here or whatever kind of story turn you can take. You can't take that many turns when there's just two. And this even got scary at a couple points to me, like when he was the looking knife, for her, sure. you know, he, yeah, he couldn't find her, before, you know, yeah. uh, for a minute. And, Especially uh, when you and, and I, I didn't know what the film, where it was going to lead. I was, for all I knew, it was going to become a thriller. All of a sudden I was like, if that's the case and they did this awesome. like half hour long argument that got me invested in the characters and then she went missing or some shit and like it becomes this like Who horrific thing. Have to hide the body. Like, that would be wild. Or the scene as Jay was mentioning is the other point where it scared me was when she got the knife and shit and um, that that i already knew she was acting the pills. like i get i was like oh she's acting See, I, 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 I didn't i, 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 I thought it was like, coming but i, I was thought like, she did a good I'm, job i saw that yeah, coming like five miles away i i, oh. I didn't I well, I I, 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 until at the end of the the, the scene mm -hmm. i didn't i thought she was actually just starting to like i was out. wondering that's, that's what i'm that saying that was going to be yeah. the reveal it occurred to me at the very beginning she could be acting but i wondered throughout the whole thing if she's acting or not yeah yeah yeah, I, and again, like, <laughs> what about you, Larissa? You like, you ever break out a knife in a fight with a dude? Uh, I've had a woman, <laughs> she ran out of the kitchen <laughs> with a knife. About it. And the thing is, though, she, she wanted to give it to me so I could kill her. She was being all dramatic. She's like, just go God. ahead and kill me. You know, give you me hurt me so much. Or see, so when she came out of the kitchen with a knife, I was like, whoa, you know, I'm, I'm but cut, yeah, at least she cut. wasn't going to use it on me. She was, I'm, I'm starting to understand no, why Chris likes this movie. <laughs> I told you I can relate. To I'm, some, I'm starting to understand. Yeah. See, and everybody that I know that so likes this to movie, be a model who didn't get cast in this movie. So here's the thing. Here's, <laughs> right. Here's the thing that's super interesting about this movie, right? Um, there's not a lot of, that is, but this element of it is, right? So everyone I know who likes it has said that. 
everyone, everyone I know who like that has had some has, sort of has, personal uh, relationship yeah. in terms of like they have something about this they that it relates relate to. It better. Yeah. Every single one. So yeah, mostly so that's, though, the, I would the, say the, that's you haven't usually. That's not I, the mean, I don't. Really... I don't think there's a single movie that I've ever actually passionately felt anything about where I didn't uh, see something within myself reflected in the movie. It's uh, just not you're as interesting narcissist. to me. If I <laughs> no, right, you're like, not... <laughs> well, no, but it's like you want, but that can be a universal human experience, right? Where you're catching a feeling on, uh, like a feeling that you feel. But it's like I don't get that from every movie. Like sometimes movies I like. Uh, for yeah, kind of shallow reasons because they just appeal to some kind of interest I have or whatever. But um, I I don't know. I feel like it it had like a you know I know that it had the nepotistic you were like inside baseball. We all work in film, so that's well. I mean, you guys work in film. I like <laughs> attempted sort to, of. but I related a lot to it. So sure, but um, I don't know. It, to me, it also felt like. There's that whole simmering passive aggression thing that yes. uh, I've seen in other people and I felt in myself where you really are angry at someone about this thing and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and then they say sorry, but then it's not enough. And it's like, I related to that and uh, I don't know. Sure, whatever. Well, I don't think it's wrong to like a movie because you see yourself in it. Well, I will say this. How many okay, white first... chicks have you fucked with, Ryan? <laughs> is how white women argue I, I'm gonna, he I'm wrote gonna, a white woman that made it I'm, it, I'm gonna plead the fifth on that question <laughs> uh, but I will say this okay so in terms of like us being in the working in the industry like like you got like I'm very outspoken I say whatever I want so you know like the average kind of Hollywood person wouldn't come on a podcast and say Denzel Washington's son is a wooden actor. They wouldn't say, I didn't think since I was, they wouldn't shit on Sam Levinson's like movie because they'd be like, I want to work with him. See, I don't care about that, right? And also I'm on a podcast with the makers of Cactus Jack. Yeah, we obviously don't give a fuck. Right. So like, why? yes, we, and and, and like we're on the periphery, the, per, yes. like, the periphery of the fucking industry. You know what I'm right. saying? So it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, so, but to add on to that, right? Um, my view about this film, like, or my view about films in terms of like relating to them in order to enjoy them. I feel, I feel like at one point I was like that. Like, I feel like when I was like younger, like I was like that. Like I would like a movie just because I saw some of myself in it or, or I saw some, something about that reflected some of me back at me. But like at a certain point in my life, I outgrew it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I progress beyond that. And I'm not, that's not, that's not like a slight at people who still do that. Yeah. Me. And I don't that's think any of us here probably are right. really offenders of that. Exactly. I don't think that's exactly right. what you're saying. She'd like well, it only because it's about, but like, I, I enjoy sometimes, movies. Sometimes I hate a movie because it's too much uh, right, from right. my mind because then I'm angry. I'm like, fuck you for making that movie. Like, right. like she was in the bathtub. I was like, that was my story. Fuck you. <laughs> I honestly so I won't divorce. watch certain movies or certain yeah, shows because I hate it. So, I hate it. So yeah, it's like, like a balance anyway. I try and divorce myself from the shit. Honestly, I make it an active effort to believe it or not. So when I can say I relate to these things, that's just a comment on it. That's not really a pillar upon which I'm judging the movie, essentially. You know what I'm saying? Right. But uh, I do think there is something to that. And that's part of the power of film and the catharsis of it and all is that we do relate to it on a universal human level, whether or not it's something I relate to in, with a specificity of being a white male or somebody who what any relationship you get in with a woman or i've had these experiences not even that so much but it's like i've had these feelings mm -hmm. i felt betrayed i felt that's what it's really about the movie's about betrayal she's like i should have been in the fucking movie but he has a very good case that you are a pussy who didn't fucking go up for the movie and go get it so it's like they all have valid points of view those make she the best argument all this time yeah. that she had these grievances or it's only now that you know yeah, it's the been best night of getting his all these accolades of his life yeah. she's waiting to sabotage it all instead of bringing yeah. these up earlier so, but you know, he should have <laughs> thanked her yeah i think that's all he had to do just thank her that was inconsiderate if he just thanked her it would have been all all right sure. you know that would have been so, a whole different night <laughs> those feel like a classic chick move like yeah oh yeah and it was authentic I, in that regard i thought i don't so. i don't i just didn't care like I just didn't give a fuck about either one of them. Oh. Like I was like, "Oh, poor, you made a movie. Oh, that's dope. Oh, you didn't get to be in it. Oh, okay." Like I know people that I'm got not even sure. I don't think I and, necessarily cared yeah. on those subjects either. It was Maybe. more just I, I I was more on board for the the dynamics of the argument itself, not so yeah. much with the reasons for it were as much. You right. know, but right, there was right. some like, yeah, and um, 
you know, <laughs> getting credit and all for, you know, and, and you know, like that's that's a common thing in a relationship that, you know, if one's successful and the other yes. one is just cheers, <laughs> um, the other one helps support that person. And and I'm that's a very mm-hmm. common universal thing theme that uh you know the one person to the side that was there all along helping support the one who got all the accolades and the praise you know feels slighted even if it, their involvement wasn't to the, the degree that her character's was right so that, that that's those subjects you know seem universal and true and you know uh yeah especially for again, creatives it's like i don't know about you guys it's like as like a, a writer it's like i get fucking mad if i see myself reflected in something that someone i know has written where i'm like you fucking got that for me. Yeah, right. you, you fucking shoplifted my essence, there's, you fucker. But then def- I do that to other people. I try not to do it to other writers per se, but I definitely shoplift essences because I'm like, Roy oh, Brooks you just pissed me off. Stuff. Well, guess yeah, what? I exactly. just got like a whole story idea that I'm now going to write because I'm fucking mad that's at you. That's what we do. So- huh? Yeah, Marissa- that's half the point of it all, yes. right? Is that I mean, is the and that's where, the therapy where, do you, where do you get anything for material if it's not from your own life and what you've observed and other people and all that you know yeah right uh, yeah larissa is definitely going to be in a script for sure <laughs> <laughs> how dare you i'm going to well, shop as long as i'm a villain make me she a doesn't villain. realize this is an audition right i'm gonna shoplift her her essence i'm gonna shoplift it i'm actually gonna be putting like, kind of snuff nah. yeah, i was gonna say there's some kind of rape joke uh, in there shoplift your essence like ugh. all right um <laughs> I want to ask you, and I'm glad you invoked Cactus Jack because I don't mm. want to be the one to bring it up. But we had a critic, which is actually like some fucking Rotten Tomatoes approved critic chick on Culture Mix magazine who fucking destroyed it. But one of her big gripes was the lack of diversity. And it's like, it's a two hander with a white supremacist and the one guy he's going to let in his basement, a fucking white guy, of course to film him and shit when our whole post crew was like three mexican dudes you know how you know how you know what a fucking minefield pakistani you know what a you you, you know what a minefield that would have been sorry like if you would have like if you would have made one character black you know what kind of fucking you'd like you think cactus jack is polarizing now you know what kind of minefield you would have stepped in if you would have made the other character black no shit Right, like, which at one stupid. point Gaul was saying we should do. I was like, no, that is not how right, it's right. going to work because like, it wouldn't that, be realistic. It wouldn't feel true to the character. It would be too. It would have nowhere to go because it would the, be so. The, anyway, yeah, for yeah. varied reasons. That's, that's a bad critique, right there. Bring it back been... to this though. But <laughs> yeah. you kind of put Sam Levinson in a damn if he does, damn if he doesn't space because if he had made this with just two white actors, he would have had the same fucking stupid critique that it was just this white dude doing the young Woody Allen working his white fucking filmmaker problems but out fuck or whatever. It. But fuck it. Like, if so, you really feel that way, if you really feel that way about the critics, fuck them. Make a make a, a two-hander, black and white, fucking, fuck it movie. Like, oh, what is what is that? Cactus Jack. Oh, my God. A two-hander, <laughs> black and white. Well, that says fuck it. Just do it. Like, that's what I would... If you would have did his version of Cactus Jack, which is just fuck it, I'm going to do it, I would have respected it. I would respect this movie a lot more. Like I would, I'm like, say all that shit you gotta yeah, say. We got three let, stars out of Ryan, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, like say all that shit. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I did a little bit of my homework, and it was like mm. the the whole project was like he kept pitching ideas to Zendaya, mm-hmm. like for her to play, and then this was the one that she was like, yeah, I want to make that one. So it was like she yeah, chose this too. one. It's not like he his intention was I'm uh, yeah. a couple of blacks to say my words and yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but what like, he did was he wrote an eight page like treatment or something, and that's how they both signed on, and then they were sort of like it was I think. A very very collaborative writing in the process of mm-hmm. working with them kind of a script from my understanding of it so i don't i mean yes you could say the intention leaks through perhaps but yeah, yeah, if yeah. that's like he's allowed to have an opinion on this he is and, he's allowed to have an opinion just like he's allowed to get skewered for that same you don't opinion. have to just have <laughs> like i don't i just i just don't like that idea of like well then if you're going to say this you have to say it through white people it's like we don't have to why don't can't have you just to. work with other creatives why is it always you don't about have this kind of there's stuff, a, this know? is this is one part of this this is one part of the like the narratives that get thrown around now you don't have to at all you just have to accept that when you put something out there it's going to get criticized and they're going to have people are going to say you should have did it this way and you just have to accept it it's kind of like it's kind of like when you did that the hand question fist- is the validity of is that the, criticism is, on it is it Hold valid on. right mm-hmm. Wait, right but but it's like that ham-fisted critique that the Malcolm does of like uh, 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 um, basically like of like socialism and shit and like um, 
Oh, like, that's that's the real bone to that's pick. That's where you now really we, checked out. Yeah, now we figured <laughs> it this out. Movie. This is no, it. You didn't get cast in the man. movie. He the picked out, critique socialism. First of all, first of all, <laughs> Larissa, I was literally, I was literally, hold up, wait a minute. This is how this, this is how Larissa knows that that's not true because I was literally messaging her, messaging her in real time while I was oh, watching this movie. Were, oh, that's interesting. Can oh. you read those to us? So, oh, so I was literally <laughs> messaging play her. Play. I saw it. So I was already had this critique going through the whole movie. So it wasn't like when he hit that point, I was like, oh, wow. Right, right, right. Was, I was joking anyway, because I had asked no, that but, question specifically. But, but like, no, but, but what's funny is this. It's like, it just kind of shows, it kind of reveals kind of like a little bit about Sam that you could, you know, like when in terms of like his idea that like all art is you're just a whore. And it's like, as if the idea that like, it's only, Art Maybe is only he's just calling his dad. I don't think he said all art. You're a he, 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 dad. The character said that if you're in the business, yeah. if you're in, in the, the business, business then yeah. you're in the business. So you, which isn't really necessarily all art, though. You know, right? But he, again, he's talking but there, strictly about but he, but I'm, si I'm simply saying that like there are plenty of filmmakers in films, right? That you can look mm -hmm. to that aren't that don't adhere to that. They don't adhere to that like ethos whatsoever. Like he acts like that shit doesn't exist. He's like, let well, me say something. Well, if you're in the game, then you're a whore. You know, basically that was his critique. You know what I'm no, saying? No, but like, here's something that here's a dangerous thing we do a lot. Mm -hmm. If you want to have two characters have an honest argument, and maybe it even is even an argument you're having in your own head, and they're both you, and it's all masturbatory and shit. Right. Can it be just an argument that's being had, and not that the movie picked you're a whore? But that's what if I'm a whore? Maybe it's all him making these characters speak out the questions he has in his own head. Mm -hmm. And for each of them, he assigns them the thesis, the antithesis, whatever. And again, the synthesis is what you're supposed to arrive at as a viewer that I don't know who's right. Maybe there's truth in what both of them are saying. And the filmmaker is purely about having that conversation, He's not struggling making with the himself. statement that I'm a whore, you're a whore. Yeah. It's like, what if we're whores? It's uh, Socratic kind of is what it's up to, you know? Yeah, I could, I could, I could see that. I, I, I have my, uh, I have my doubts though. I have my doubts just, just by, just based on like, you know, watching the movie again. I would have, like, I've only watched this movie one time. It's not like mm -hmm. I'm, I revisit. I want to give it a Ryan Jackson viewing next time. You know, like you can write a paper, a Marxist reading of a work <laughs> or something. I'm gonna give it a right, Ryan right. Jackson reading of this next time I watch it though, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. your beefs, and see well, if I despise it or if I find myself throughout. Well, check. Like, but so, so it doesn't hold up for me. So know. like when Chris, when we were talking about, right, in terms of like a little bit, uh, a little bit ago when I was saying like, I don't care, like I don't care about their petty gripes with each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Maybe I will say this, maybe it is the time that I'm living in now that is really, right, is reflecting my opinion even more so. Because I look at what people are going through on everyday lives during this pandemic. And I, I've seen people and I know people personally mm -hmm. who are experiencing legitimate hardships have lost family members have died yeah. these they've like lost their fucking problems, job this like is these the motherfuckers movie listening sure. to these motherfuckers worry yeah. about this movie i'm like i don't that's care valid, but i don't give yeah. a fuck and, that, and then that's reflected that's outside of the film mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. me so you're coming, like projecting mm -hmm. your own shit right onto but the we movie. do <laughs> but you're projecting your own shit when you see oh she stole my story oh i relate to that so we're all doing that that's what that's what's the right cool but also art. if we revisit in five years right yeah, that gives me the upper hand on you changing your point of view. Because I mean, your I'm, point of view of the film is informed by the time we live in specifically. So to I, not I, apply I, I, pandemic. Also, it's like, why can't you just make a movie that's about something without it being a personal statement coming from inside of you where you're like, this is where I stand on this issue. It's like, you can also just explore a theme, like back to the argument thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, I think like, he's maybe not saying anything about any of it it was like also just a movie about so, a relationship and the tension in the relationship right and then how um and then creative tension too so it's like maybe he doesn't actually agree with any of those things so i don't i don't like the idea of like people watching a movie and then being like well this is what that filmmaker was really trying to say Robert, and I this was this all shit. their thoughts from their head it's that's like the, i don't know i like writing all kinds of disgusting characters and it's not things that i that's we see but character. that's obviously cactus jack too so but 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 that's one of the things i i love about film is that you can have people have different reads you can read it into yeah, exactly. what you want mm -hmm. that's one of the best things mm -hmm. that's one well, of the best things to say this is what he set out right. to say you know but, you can't read my, into yeah, his yeah, motivation yeah. right but my you thing can, is this, you can know your own reaction meaning. to it but yeah, yeah. right yeah. but we we all kind of do that whether we're being honest about it or not like that's an unavoidable thing like when you're watching something it's having an effect on you and you're responding into it you're responding to however you respond to it and there's a mm -hmm. lot of re there's yeah. a lot of uh there's a lot of factors that like contribute to whatever kind of response 
it get it induces you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. from from you from experiencing it right there's a lot of different things that go into that and a lot of the things that go into that are your are your own individual like kind of your life experience you know where you're at at the time when you saw the movie you know what i mean all of that shit factors into how mm-hmm. you kind of like what's happening in the world like right say, right yeah. so all of that shit does and, and, and in terms of like art being like apolitical like i've come to the i've come to the uh uh, uh i i just i i used to believe that i don't believe that anymore like i think that like being apolitical in and of itself is a political stance you know what i mean it's like in and of itself that is a political stance like now you can be you can put art you can present art right and like let people have you know whatever interpretation they want of it once you put it out there right and you don't have to go you don't have to reveal your motivations right but both consciously and subconsciously as an artist when you're making something right it is reflective of your own belief system it's just something that you can't avoid yeah only at least informed by it yeah right it's everything you do is informed. whether you choose to write against it or toward it or whatever right right so this like i used to believe because again like I, i believe like the like that is a belief system in and of itself like the fact that like like you do not have any sort of political stance in and of itself is a belief that is political you know what i mean now i feel like this there's good ways to do it and there's bad ways to do it right i believe that like being heavy-handed is a bad way to do it like i don't think you should be heavy-handed i don't think you should be beating motherfuckers over the head with a sledgehammer trying to get your point across mm-hmm. like no mm-hmm. like don't yeah. do that there's and this there's, is basically writing the theme or not but right, then there's right. the fact any good work is going to have a million fucking themes people can extrapolate out of it when they exactly it, you know and subtlety there's you just art- can't start saying this is what right he but there's said. A- you got to say this is what it said to me or some shit. i'm not saying you got to couch the way you say anything you right. express I- yourself however the fuck you want i'm just saying i think it's important to make distinctions that i'm not ever saying that i think this is what he set out to do right well here's the thing unless it's heavy-handed i don't know if those well here's the thing though right so 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 again like there's an art to subtlety right and there's an elegance like there's an elegant way to do it right there's an elegant way to like present an idea in the context of a film right there's an elegant way to do it and there's a way that like you can kind of like again like almost trojan horse in all kinds of you know, of your own kind of like worldview or beliefs, right? Into a film. And it's not like you would immediately see it on the surface, right? But I, to me, it's like, yo, and even I've even seen that done well, though, honestly. There's there's films where I'm like, okay, they're literally beating me over the head and I, I still I still respect Fresh it. Fresh isn't one of them. Right. But <laughs> I feel like that's a lot, that's a, to me, like that's a harder kind of like, like that's a, that's a high wire act. To, mm-hmm. to, I'm like, it's harder to do. It's like, to, in, at least in my in my opinion, it's harder to do to beat something over your head and still make it good and enjoyable in a way that doesn't feel like I'm being like berated by the fucking filmmaker. Mm-hmm. You know? Like that's a much harder thing to do. So that's why when you, that's why it's not rarely ever pulled off well. That's why it's always like, yo, like. That's where subtext comes into play too. Right. Not just character, emotional subtext, but thematic mm-hmm. subtext, you know? Right. You can, it's Trojan horse that same shit into all these different scenes that seem on the surface like they aren't connected and at the end of the movie you're like oh it was doing that shit the whole time you know regardless of what the characters were up to or feeling so. and as far as me like making like declarative statements about like yo like sam livinson is doing x sam livinson is doing y mm-hmm. like that's fun like that's <laughs> right fucking on, fun like fuck all that like this film, film criticism to me is fun being and shit yeah all right and like being like yo this dude i think this dude is doing that i think this dude is doing reading into it is boom i could be fucking absolutely wrong but again that's that's how i like to like some of the most enjoyable experiences for me watching a film is when, a lot of times is when i'm hate watching something for sure you know what i'm saying <laughs> like i'm like because I'm actually engaged. Like Cactus Jack. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm engaged. No, because I'm like, yes. I'm like having questions and I'm like, okay, why is they doing this? What am like, I, I'm actually more entertained than if right. I was just trying to like observe the film on a very like, you know, in just sure. the, in the passive way that you always, always, you know, tend mm-hmm. to like enjoy film. Or and watch a film. big issue nowadays is thin skin. We got right. an issue with that on both sides of the coin. Barry or Sam Levinson. I don't know, son of Barry Levinson to do what you did to Jim. <laughs> <Son, kids. laughs> Levinson, son of son. Barry, <laughs> Barryson, forget Nordic and shit. He uh, exactly. <laughs> he should have thick skin. He knows when you get in the game that fucking you're gonna get every single kind of critique, and a lot of them are gonna make it personal and shit. That's mm-hmm. the game. That's we should game. all know that as artists, but also on the other side, people who get offended by movies and shit obviously need thicker skin as well. You know, 
It's like, that's a terrible way to watch a movie. Just going in there like, hmm, all right, let's see what you got. Are you going to fucking offend me or whatever? So many people watch shit that way. Fuck off. It's bad when it's, been, when it's being applied the way I see it being applied like today. Like, again, some of the actual criticisms that were in this movie, right? Right. Like, the it's bad. The criticism he makes in the movie, right, like, right, the critics. Right, yeah. right, right. That is a bad way to watch a movie because you, what you're doing is you're like, you got a checklist, right? And you're watching this movie based on this mm -hmm. arbitrary check checklist that's been like, you know, yes. these are the things that have to happen because this is the accepted, like, kind of like hegemonic thinking. Fuck now. Like that. That is horrible. That's not even, you know, that's a different kind of like. So did you like that scene in the movie when he was going off on that? I like some of it, like when he was like, when he said, that's a, it's a do dolly shot, you idiot or whatever. Right. Like mm -hmm. stuff like that was funny. I was like, that's funny. It just went on too long. Like that, mm -hmm. that, that issue with that for me was more so like it went on too long. Like I was like, okay, he could have, he could have I stopped. get it, but I like that it did. Cause that was her on yeah. the couch. Like, is this like, motherfucker? That ever? was the nope, character. He's, he's a, a boar, yeah, you know? Right. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But when, 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 when Zendaya, like when Marie was just laying there, I was like, I was hurt. Like at that point, I was like, "Yeah, I'm like laying there too. Like, dude, are you gonna? Are you done? Yeah. Like, are yeah. you props to oh, him I for was doing that? the I movie. Was him. <laughs> 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 really? <laughs> I felt both. Uh, yeah, Ultimately. well, I felt both. Yeah, that's I felt, really the that's answer. What the cool show of a check or whatever? The, not cool show. What the yeah. fuck's that? The effect, the I cutting back and forth, the context know, given by the cut or whatever. Of course, yeah. when they cut to her, I felt like she felt. When they cut to him, I felt like him. That's the fucking power of editing, you know. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> So again, I look at that character, specifically the Malcolm character, and I look at like, um, when he talks about reflecting things, seeing reflected, right? Like, like that's me if I'm like 20. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not me as a grown man. Like, yeah, that's how I feel. I right. I'm, look, I'm looking at him like, oh, like, so again, it's like not- Isn't like, it though, Ryan? Isn't it? I mean, it, it is, but it isn't because I didn't, I, obviously I didn't have a successful movie premiere and, and then the studio didn't put me in a house. But like, in terms of like my reaction to that type of scenario, if I was like 20, it would probably be similar to his. You know what I mean? Like um, head up my own ass, believing in the whole, like um, believing in my own kind of like hype. You know what I'm saying? Like almost like the marketing behind me, I'm buying into it. You know what I'm saying? You, like, are uh, you saying this is a fear you think might happen to you or you think would have happened to you when you were younger? Yeah, something? yeah, yeah. When I was younger, like, I feel like like I would have thought the way this guy's thinking right now about mm -hmm. this situation. If well, I what do you think young. the chances are, even though you feel evolved beyond that now, if you're mm -hmm. in the situation, you find yourself <laughs> still I would have, first way. of all, I would have been like, first of all, being being in the situation that he's in, I'm like, y'all just need to break up because you, you both of y'all are toxic as fuck. Like, this is, to me, this isn't like, they're like well this is about his wife or whatever i'm like okay fine but i feel like effectively i feel like if that's the case right and they go on to get married then i'm like yo y'all need counseling <laughs> like because the end this felt like a breakup movie like by the end i was like oh they're this is good i wanted to get into this the actual yeah, movie I, I, I felt like by the end it was like i'm looking at two people who are destined to break up Probably. Like they're standing next to each other, yeah. but it's like there's space in between them, and it's like That's they're the looking, melancholy like, of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm like these people. I related to that part where then it's like, well, then you just stay together. Like I've had that happen. Mm -hmm. I I know too, yeah. but but what but I'm saying even is, even if they it's like four to, more of these, long, for how long they exactly. break up in six yeah. years or whatever. Right, right. It's like ultimately a kid now. That's what but I'm saying. I think that he needed a bit of what she had too, though. He did need it to be checked, and he, you know, I think, and she grounded oh, him as she she caught it. He needed he needed to be checked for sure. For sure. I mean, I'm that that's one yeah, thing that i, I can crazy. say like, but also like They're she's kind of like everyone's a mess though everyone i look at right every relationship yeah. i see i'm like you're all most humans are fuck ups up. and losers <laughs> and most of you are wrong about fucking everything all the time shut the fuck up so that's why when i see it in the movie i'm like it kind of rings true it's a bunch yeah. of assholes too full Flawed of themselves people. fucking yeah exactly mm -hmm. and her 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 whole her whole like <laughs> Her whole, like, she lost me. Like, I'm trying to eat Mike and Ike's. But, like, she lost me when she was like, I should have been in the movie. And I deserve to have some of that. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I, well, I get feel that. like what she's saying is the most true art you can make is, like, truly confessional, personal art. And now I can never tell the story because I let right. you fuckers go and tell it. It's kind of how we feel when we sell but, a script. But she can goes tell. But, it and shit. But here's the thing. She could tell that job. story. Or she we use have. a great idea in a script yeah, that never gets she produced. Like that she ideas. I admit right. her feelings might be invalid. But, right, right. Her feelings are like invalid. 
Right, I right. feel like they're legitimate in a sense too, though, like emotionally, and it feels realistic that she would have these that feelings. These characters, most would, feelings yeah. are invalid. Most feelings are dumb as fuck. Well, of right. course, these are the worst things about us. These characters feel that way because they're based on rich kids who live in Hollywood who go through that shit. So yeah, no, no, nah, nah, dude, I related to this yeah. huge. Like, uh, I'm not. I feel, too, like, yeah. I'm, I feel I, like this is like a, just a hey, well, it's an epitism. It's like no, it's not. It's also personality type and everything else like that. It's thing. like. A lot That's of how they would react it. in this setting, you know, like, yeah, like some that. people don't like fucking they're just like, it's an idea. It's a character, whatever. Just do it yourself. Do your own. But it's like, no, no, no. Some people get very emotionally like it's like a heart wrenching thing when someone else writes a piece of what you think is your thing. And then it's they just they just went and did it. It's like, but that anyways, whatever. But John David Look, Washington I'm related to all of it. Listen, it's I know it's hitting a nerve. I know. Um, <laughs> um, Comer, you but, are, dude. Comer, but, you are. That's his but, review. Uh, Comer, you are, dude. <laughs> well, I mean, I think one thing we are getting at here is that art does like affect different people based on their own experiences. I mean, that's a definite thing. That's of part of what it's supposed to do. Yeah, sure. you know? Right. And, right. It's, and that function the movie. Some success. some relate to it more than others, and therefore it resonates more. The fact we could have this conversation about it to me is it makes it a success artistically or whatever, you know. Right. And now you can yeah. of course do this about the garbage pail kids movie if you want. Actually, <laughs> let's do See, it. That's, that's on my list. See, that's I can do this for a review. Yes. I could do this with almost every movie. Right. So it's like, sure. to me, it's like, oh, whatever. We do it's it just, all the time. It, the only reason it's a success in that re regard is because, again, like, I, I need. You kind of can't, though. We watch Santa with muscles. Yeah. You can't. It, well, the I conversations need you guys. are entirely different. You know? I need term, you guys. Feelings so, and emotional right. authenticity. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. Santa with muscles, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I need the three boxes. I need the three boxes in front of me to to uh, to, to, to to praise the movie in order for my for me to yeah, even yeah. have a sounding Cat board. Fly it and shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, you know, like it's almost relative. You're like I'm a you know? <laughs> right. I'm. I mean, I love movies. Like yeah. I love them. Like it's just like I just maybe it's just everything's not for me. I say that about myself. Like, look, for sure, for I'm sure. not for everybody, and you're not supposed to be for everybody, right? And I feel the same way about like art like art's not for everybody that's the worst kind of art this is why yeah, i don't this right. is this, yeah. this is the reason i don't get excited about marvel and disney shit is because it's for everybody like Yo, is, larissa said she can only get like 10 minutes into cactus shack and i said i like you more knowing that i understand like, first off for being honest no, I, I secondly mean, for further. just like i totally get it if you can't like, suffer I can't him i can really but you know what's not a masochist but cool. you know, yeah. but you know yeah, no, it was like it was really stressful. Like, but it was the same. Yeah, that's I what we were like trying to do. Kinda, you checked out. Exactly. Yeah, so that was successful. Like, because you were trying to do that. Like, I've I've watched other movies where I'm like, I can't, I can't, like, because it's just so distressing. Mm -hmm. um, what are some examples of other movies like that that you couldn't fit? Body horror finish? for sure is like a it, huge a thing that genre. fucking just freaks me out. But I love that. Yeah, show. it was silo, like the, silo, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah I'm not shit. gonna ever watch that. I'm never gonna watch Human Centipede. I'm not like even House of a Thousand <laughs> Corpses. I was like, this is too much oh, for me. Man, I can't deal right. with it. You're like missing out. <laughs> hey, yeah, anything that really think, stresses uh, me out. Do you perfect, think perfect Sam double bill? Robinson, what's up? Per perfect double bill. Cactus Jack in a Serbian film. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say got Cactus a... Jack in. <laughs> no, no, no. Driving Miss Daisy got mentioned in reviews. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. <laughs> driving Miss Daisy. Yes. yes. Cactus Jack and Driving Miss Daisy That's together. Good mm -hmm. double bill. Toy Story or something. Driving Miss Daisy is actually more offensive than Cactus Jack. I'm on record. <laughs> uh, As a filmmaker. Uh, <laughs> Let's do that episode, y'all. Uh, yeah, that's my. I don't know how much time we have left, but the shit's been as fun as. Keep I thought it going, it would be. keep it going, party. Dude, <laughs> Ryan, next time we could talk beforehand about when to cut it off, Ryan. But we've mm -hmm. had guests stick around for a long time after the buzzer, but you got the record, like two times we've gone like three or four fucking hours with you off camera, dude. <laughs> it just yeah, goes, I, but I, it's kind of it's a, it's like. I don't want to be rude and cut it off, but he's probably thinking the same thing, but I'm having a good time. Right. Yeah. So it's I, weird. I'm long winded. Likewise. <laughs> yeah, Why do yeah. you think we have a fucking all buzzer? Known for our rants. Yeah, right. yeah. We had to learn to cut ourselves off. Prone to ranting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was why it was conceived <laughs> because mm. we didn't know how to stop. Larissa. We just had this hard out buzzer. I don't know when the buzzer's coming, but do you want to give us a little update on Army Hammer and his little fucking <laughs> thing he has going on? Or just at least inform those of us who aren't sure what the rumor is? The I like, lo I lost interest in it. Cannibalism. Like <laughs> Well, what's the whole thing? It's like he ate 
chicks or something like physical no, he's like, i don't know he's like sex with people but he wants to like eat their skin or something or drink their blood but um <sighs> but then i read somewhere else that it was like some pr distraction to like minimize like the allegations against him of like kind of sexual battery or i know how we distract him let's say i'm a cannibal <laughs> but yeah i was like you know what Genius. i was like this is just like i've had enough of like fake news in general so i'm like you know what as soon as i kind of read that part i was like you know what i just have lost interest in this like, cnn nbc fake news i've been trying to like wean off all the celeb gossip for the last year anyways but right, uh, so you're the wrong like, person to ask at the wrong time shame. at least well, i no, just I like was... the crazy shit where people are like aren't like right. i read something that one day I was looking into it that they like found grave sites and shit of people he might have killed to eat and shit. That's when yeah, it started getting it funny was. and the, hilarious to me. And like three hikers <laughs> went missing or something. Yeah, but there's Hammers stories like that. Hikers. Can you imagine? Well, I want to see stories? that movie. They're alone, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it cool if I start filming now? No, when we get inside. Why are you here? I just thought it was really interesting, you know, that someone hasn't left their basement in six months, not even to use the bathroom. Is that true? Why would I want to go out there? I got everything I need right here. That's what's wrong with most people. They're weak-willed pussies and parasites. You buy into that whole, it takes a village bullshit. You know how many aliases I've used calling into radio shows? I've had it up to my goddamn gills with the systematic feminization of this country. Aren't we up more than we want to? Get your own damn show if you think you got that much to say. Yeah. You live in your mom's basement. Run! Get down! Fuck you! What's so special about my loser son? You really do hate your own mother. She's a woman. Why wouldn't I? You know, there's some disconnect there, and, and if I could find it, what is hate? Where does it come from? Where does it go? You want to know what gender you are? Reach down the front of your fucking pants and shoot fucking kite. Black lives matter. Do you call horses slaves? Liberal fucktard. Enough with the parades and the rainbow flags. Dude, this guy's, it's like pure hate, man. I want to see something really fucking cool. This guy is a fucking animal. He's got himself on a leash. He's itching to get off that fucking leash. And he's gonna fucking kill some people. I'm gonna fucking show him. No, stop, man, stop! What are we here? Look at me! Look at me! We're gonna help you show him the light. We're gonna change the world. This is Cactus Jack coming to you live from a studio audience. To the man who calls himself Cactus Jack, we have watched as you have rocketed to infamy. And you wonder why these cornered animals lash out. Get the fucking side. And now, we have watched as you have called for literal blood. I know you're out there listening. It's buzzing in your ears, burrowing into your brain. Do it, Jack. You're gonna love this. I pulled that trigger on that motherfucker's head. Your VPN will not shield you. The dark net will not hide you. You and your kind are finished. You think I'm scared of you? Come and fucking get me! Might I be your neighbor? Neighbor?